to the at home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf X Moore, and we're here to keep you guys up to date with everything Rocket League. We got a great show for you guys today. On today's show, we're going to go back all the way to the beginning of Season X and recap both the fall and winter split in the Grid Watch. Double Tap takes a look at the Kings of Europe, and of course, you know, we got all our good content from you guys in Breakout. The RLCS Season X Spring Split was just announced, and there's a few changes, so let me get my notes out here because there's a lot. This split will feature a 20 team format. The first day of each regional play will consist of round robin play between four groups of five teams. The last place teams in each group are eliminated. The remaining teams will then have to fight it out on day number two in a knockout gauntlet where only eight teams will advance then to the next round. The remaining teams will then compete against each other in an eight team bracket on championship Sunday. Yeah, that's a lot, so make sure you tune in so Gibbs can explain it to you guys again on the Rocket League broadcast. But to get you prepared for the Season X Spring Split, let's take a look back and recap both the Fall and Winter Split in Gridwatch. LCS Season X Winter Split has finally drawn to a close, and the Spring Split is already kicking off in some regions. But before it gets into full swing, let's take a look back at the Season X Majors so far and the tales of glorious triumph, bitter defeat, and shocking upsets contained therein. The Fall Major saw the rise of three incredible contenders in three separate regions. In North America, all eyes were on Space Station Gaming as they battled their way through prospective champions G2 Esports and NRG to claim the top spot. Though they had never even won a regional in previous seasons, SSG came out the gate in Season X with explosive momentum and zeal, showing everyone that they were a force to be reckoned with and could trade blows with the best of the best in North America. Another challenge. This is it. Well, NRG's last chance. He goes for a quick one to Squishy. Back over to Garrett. Justin already jumped in the air and he missed the ball. He missed it. Time is expiring. There's no gold for NRG on the board. Space Station have done it. They are your North American Fall Major Champions. Base Station Gaming, they have had such an incredible split. They started off on fire and they finish as the champions for North America. Meanwhile, in South America, fledgling Team True Neutral blindsided the region with an incredibly dominant performance. Tien, who had only just formed earlier that year and hadn't exactly set the world on fire in the Prime and Grand Series, cut a hot swath through the competition to become regional champions in their eighth month of existence. He cannot be, he cannot be making those mistakes right now. They can't do that here now. This is their last chance. Last 10 seconds of game. Race Bull putting the pressure of the demolition. Say, JG. Kayo clearing the wall. Putting it, setting it for card, but there was interception. Now, Thunder tried to send it to the middle. They have to keep it in there. They couldn't do it. And true neutral, true neutral gets the match. And of course, it would be a crime not to mention BDS, the prodigal titans of Europe who spent 2020 setting the continent ablaze with their incredible skills, culminating in a clean sweep of the European major. The perfect capstone for a year, which saw them go from minor league dreamers to top of the world. And they're still on the prowl. Off the backboard one more time, marked by eight, looks to follow, and that's a huge sigh of the reef for Team BDS. Yeah, BDS are going to be happy. Fairy Pig pulled out the offensive fix because the shots looked more scary. Final few seconds for Vitality. They just want to keep this alive. They just want to keep it away from BDS, but Extra's got his hands on the ball. It's back to Alpha. That was the last bounce that they've got to play with. Into the middle, but away from Monkey Moon. And BDS take it. Vitality fought back bravely, but it just was not enough. If the Fall Majors were all about coronating new kings, then the Winter Major was a victory lap for already established teams. BDS continued to dominate Europe, winning the Major from upper bracket despite some tight competition from Renault Vitality, who were eager to reclaim their regional crown from the young upstarts. Third peak with just a little bit of space. Can't get that second touch where he could hook it over to himself. Alpha has managed to find some room! Oh! His and the crossbar for a third time denies oh, Vitality! Fine. Extra with a monstrous save, keeps BDS in the series. That was Vitality's ticket, but it's been oh, stolen and now Extra gets the winning goal. He saves his team at one end and wins a major for them at the other. 
North America similarly saw NRG return to prominence, the Season 8 champs battling through a stacked bracket to bring home the trophy. Their biggest obstacle? Rogue who showed their mettle through an astonishing lower bracket run and a last-minute bracket reset. Even if they couldn't ultimately go the distance, Rogue left their mark on the scene, and NRG with their tenacity. Trogo chases this one. It's over the top of Garrett. It's up to Justin. He gets in the way. That was two players though through it. All up to Turin Turo. Here comes the breakout. Justin pushing it high. Turin Turo gets it off the backboard, but Squishy's there as well. Turin Turo has to make a second touch. And now to carry it away. Gives it the first killer. The clutch player touted by some as the best player in the world right now. Can he step up in the moment when Rogue needs it? Justin on the backboard for Ooh, Garrett nice. to drop it down and through! They get revenge for the regional event number three and become RLCS North American Winter Split Major Champion! With the Spring Split shaking up the format yet again, only time will tell who emerges victorious from the final leg of Season X. If the prior two majors are any indication, it's anyone's game. New challengers and old champions are constantly grinding and refining their skills, thirsty for another shot at glory. If you guys have been watching the show, you already know who our guest is, so let's bring him right in here. It's Adam Thornton, a.k.a. Lawler. Buddy, how you been? Good. How you doing, bud? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, it's been a grind for you, as per usual. I see you <laughs> every day. I got videos popping up in my news feed from you. So, um, Hey, man, I'm glad something's popping up for you. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean, so let's talk... Rocket League. <laughs> let, <laughs> My videos are on your recommended. That's all uh, that yeah, matters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay, all course. that matters. Okay. Uh, let's let's talk about this, man. We've got two splits down now. Um, it's been quite the gauntlet of of Rocket League that we've had through the the fall split and then the winter split with multiple different formats. Uh, now that we've seen it all, what are your thoughts just so far on you know switching up the formats? What we've seen from teams? Just a general kind of consensus from those two splits from you. I mean, if anybody's tuned into my content lately, they know how much I hate double elimination. So, uh, <laughs> very happy winter split is over. Um, I am so burnt out by the amount of Rocket League after that to where I cannot imagine what it's like for the players and the coaches and even you guys on broadcast. Uh, there's been a lot of games going on. So, um, I think we're finally in the home stretch. I think that motivates and it makes a lot of people excited for myself as like a fan just watching knowing that there's essentially like five six teams in both regions kind of fighting for that six fifth place spot um i think really helps that anticipation of like okay this this you know split in general looking at every individual regional it's really coming down to the wire plus we got our last iteration of the rosters man like there's a lot of really exciting things about just the spring split in general uh when it comes to like storylines and everything developing towards the tail end of the season well i'm, I'm curious then um you know just to throw it all at you, out of all the teams here, you know, across the different regions, um, with this new format, do you think there's any teams that this particularly excels for? Do you think it's just going to be the top dogs finally having a format that really secures themselves those spots at the top because their consistency? Do you think that it allows for, you know, um, underdog teams to kind of fly under, or does this kind of cut them off uh, in their attempts to do that? I think Ron Robin is going to catch a lot of people off guard. Um, you're playing four matches over the course of two days, which I think is beneficial for a lot of teams that may have a, a shaky start. But at the same time, that it can also be really intimidating where like if you have a bad day zero, as they're calling it, because it's not on the Rocket League broadcast, um, being able to have that night to go back and be like, okay, what did we mess up? How can we, be be how can we better prepare for the next day? Um, teams that come to mind, obviously for me, are going to be a team like version one where you know, the addition of Kam has proven very fruitful. Um, not really that likely to make it to the World Championships because of that, but um, you're seeing a team like that where they get so close and then the ability to really transition into that next day, I think will be a big difference. But again, I think you're still going to see the same teams dominant. I think Vitality, Vitality really benefits from this schedule because they are notably starting a little bit slow. But then when they get going, they're almost unbeatable. And that brings me to our next topic. It's rosters and roster changes, because obviously teams want to be the best. And if they're not there yet, they're going to look to bring someone else on or kick someone off to find that perfect uh, measurement of, of what it is to be a good team. So uh, let's go through a couple of these. We're not, we can't obviously hit them all because uh, a lot Too of teams yeah. Yeah, make this. And there's some that it's like, really, we're not going to see much of these teams anyway. So we'll skip those ones. Um, let's start it off in, in Europe with a couple ones that caught my eye here. The first one is Bluey to Galaxy Racer in place of Eek. So I feel like that's a big move. We saw Galaxy Racer looking like a pretty solid team for a bit. 
and then they drop back down again. Do you think Bluey's the, the change they need? Yeah, I'm I'm interested about this one. So to provide a little bit of context, this is the former Monkeys roster. Um, I actually was the one who commentated them and got to watch their growth with Arju through the grid. And he brought in a much needed, like assertive pressure on offense and a completely 180 the team going from knocked out immediately to top eight every single week. So it was exciting to see that transition, but there has definitely been a lack of presence on offense. Uh, you either have to hope that Matane or Ixo is going to pop off that day, and that's the only chance they have. Um, and there just hasn't been that consistency of pressure on the offense after Arju creates an opportunity. So I think Bluey, even though he hasn't been really getting the attention with his, you know, kind of departure, I guess you want to call it, to the triple trouble, he's still been putting up fairly good results. And I think it's going to motivate him more than anything. He has an opportunity to be on a top eight team again and a chance to make a run for that sixth place spot because I don't think anybody's beaten out Dig to toss in five. So um, I think that sixth spot is up for grabs with so many teams. I mean, you're talking right now Dignitas and Gilder both 10 points away in fifth, sixth. I think those those spots are really, really sought after. And I think Galaxy Racer is poised to do it. Thank you so much, man. See you later. Camper, el balón que queda rebotando. Esto puede terminar en gol. Laucha que se recupera. Firefox, qué disparo de Firefox. Dios, 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 qué disparo de Firefox. Y esto puede significar el avance a la siguiente ronda. Susto para Noble. Pero parece que ya se están acomodando en el partido. Low on Firefox. Are the members of Drive Group right now? I guess not after MJ is finally able to get that midfield, but it's not going to help when Crimson's on your defensive side. I haven't been able to manage it just yet. Though Walcott will be a player I'm looking at, at least for the future. He had, oh my goodness, a duck, a double off the roof. Gets the extra power redirect. What a monster. My jaw's on the floor and my eyes are bulging wide right now. Great back in Sakura Blue's defensive zone and retain this pressure that they have maintained for almost the whole game. Ducks again. Here are the hat trick. Three shots, three goals. That's all she needs. I think the only issue with putting hot shots together is that there's not always too many great shots to put together that we haven't seen before, but that doesn't seem to be a problem with the breakout. And what's a breakout without your complimentary rule number one? And Virock is providing not one, not two, but three of them. It's honestly now just looks like Rocket League speed dating. They all take turns roll one in and see who they create chemistry with. Let's move on though. Next up is Jaco Z, Yako Z, however you say it. Him and his teammate are on the same wavelength for this play. Well, I love the, the feel, the vibe, the cinematic look, the beginning music. Oh, we're gonna need an audio warning on that one, that's for sure. Let's move on here as Nixie battles on the back end of a 1v1 showdown.
And this is why boost management is an incredibly important skill to learn about, kids. Anyways, our next one comes up from Chusta, who says he's lost so many games attempting this, and I can honestly see why. And if you look closely, he's in fact losing the game. You gotta win some. I guess he's maybe you'll get consistent and start winning. Well, kudos to you. But let's move on here because we're getting to our last one. We started with a real one. Why not finish it with a real one? I mentioned that speed dating. This might be a better attempt from Gemi, folks. <laughs> I straight up laughed at the exact same time that he laughed on this one. What what a take. Tag team, you're in. That was brilliant. I haven't seen that one before. But we do have to move on. We can't dwell on all the fun stuff here. We get serious. It's time to go to Double Tap, where we take a look at BDS, the current kings of Europe. BDS. While they are now hailed as perhaps the strongest team in all of Europe, the reigning champions of RLCS Season X had a most humble beginning. From a powerhouse trio that slowly assembled in true Avengers fashion, to the stars that aligned to make their streak happen, here's the true story behind Europe's unstoppable juggernauts. BDS rise to power starts not with one team, but three. The first two were competitors in the EU minor league. Xenomoon, whose star player was a young Frenchman named Monkey Moon, and ARG, headed by Mark by 8 The two teams clashed on occasion, most frequently at the Rivals Esports Open qualifiers as both vied for a shot at squaring off in the RLCS proper someday. This game will go off the backboard. Mark by 8 has control. Zensus will bounce it in center. Monkey Moon going to try and keep that whole thing going as Zensus tries to pass it to Noli. They paid out the entire defensive and that is much more like it. No solo play involved in that one. It's a team to score the first of the game. Very, very nice. The second they pull out the team plays, they look like such a better team. And it is hard when the losses start stacking up in the league. You do lose trust in your teammates, and it is much harder to really have that same trust and belief. In the summer of 2019, Team Xenomoon disbanded, leaving the talented Monkey Moon without a banner to fly. ARG scooped him up a couple months later, putting both young guns on the same squad. Now all they needed was time and practice. Flash forward to early 2020, ARG is acquired by fellow three-letter acronym Team BDS, just in time for the ninth season of the Rocket League Rival series. And surprisingly, despite struggling to crack the top five in previous seasons, something incredible happened. The newly minted BDS won first place, dropping only a single match in the entire series. Secured the top spot yet! Rick's Ronde barely misses with eight seconds left. Now Mark back the other way. BDS has a chance to end this in regulation. They will not. And it looks like we're headed to overtime. Whoa. Louis got to get there and Mark's not going to keep that alive. Can Monkey Moon get there? Yes. Maybe BDS can still do this without overtime, but that will send... Oh! Monkey Moon will try Whoa. again and he does! Oh my goodness! Monkey Moon marches BDS to the RLCS! Their victory secured them a spawn in the RLCS 10th season, which was still a ways off thanks to COVID-19 delaying its commencement. BDS used this extra time to grind extra hard, even winning a few European events in the offseason. But their next huge step was the signing of AS Monaco Esports Extra in July of 2020, a player who had trounced the former ARG squad in their earlier clashes, including taking top spot in Season 8 of the Rival Series. It is I Ignite to drop one down for Tigre, and Mark by eight and company there for the clear. A little bit of scrambled play coming out from ARG. Don't want to see that in overtime. And in comes Tigre off the back wall over to Extra. Extra ends the game and AS Monaco steal away game number one. Scrambling, good in golf, not so much in Rocket League. And that ball just got away from ARG. They had a tough time clearing the ball out. The communication broke down, the defense broke down, and AS Monaco. With this third All-Star, BDS soon-to-be Dream Team was complete. When the fall split kicked off the following month, they were ready to show the world the true worth of their sweat and tears. As summer gave way to autumn, BDS started to win, and they didn't stop winning. Fall Regional Event 1, Fall Regional Event 2, multiple weeks of the grid, culminating in a clean sweep of the Fall Major. Off the backboard one more time, marked by eight, looks to follow, and that's a huge side of the reef for Team BDS. Yeah, BDS are going to be happy. Fairy Pig pulled out the offensive fakes because the shots looked more scary. Final few seconds for Vitality. They just want to keep this alive. 
They just want to keep it away from BDS, but Extra's got his hands on the ball. It's back to Alpha. That was the last bounce that they've got to play with. Into the middle, but away from Monkey Moon. And BDS take it. Vitality fought back bravely, but it just was not enough. BDS came out of the gate with explosive force and momentum, toppling the region's best and most powerful teams time and time again in one of the most impressively consistent win streaks in Rocket League history. And they didn't stop there either. While a shaky start in the winter split left some wondering if their success was perhaps a flash in the pan, BDS brought it back with aplomb, seizing the final regional event in the winter major in succession, cementing their status as the uncontested strongest team in the entire region. Alpha has managed to find some room! Oh! And the crossbar for a third time! Denied oh Vitality! My. Extra with a monstrous save. Keeps BDS in the series. That was Vitality's ticket. But it's been oh! stolen and no oh! Extra! Gets the winning goal! He saves his team at one end and wins a major for them at the other. Extra has styled in these past three games. And if there was anyone that deserved it. No one can predict the future, except maybe BDS, but it is impossible to deny that BDS is looking stronger and stronger with each passing day. Oh man, it just reminds me more and more that I can't wait and I need a world championship LAN. I need it to see if they're truly the best. I will say though, however, that it is nice that we're getting all this specu speculation leading up to it. The fact that so many people are so adamant that this team's better, this team's better, BDS would wipe, SSG would take in, NRG's the best, is making that world so much better when it eventually happens. But that's a ways off, and we're all done here for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, check out more of our content on YouTube and, of course, on Twitter, at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching and to send you out for a little overtime action here is your weekly backfire. Ba -ba -ba